Today is Tuesday, January 16th. We'll tell you who came out on top in the first voting contest of the 2024 presidential race and which candidate decided to drop out. Also, where Americans are getting the brunt of winter weather today. Plus, where a volcano erupted and forced evacuations. How a U.S. service member ditched her military fatigues for a crown and sash. And some of the most talked about moments from last night's Emmy Awards. Those stories and more news to know next. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. For the first time, American voters formally weighed in on the 2024 presidential candidates, and the results were overwhelming. Former President Trump scored a record-breaking triumph. Before this, Bob Dole scored the biggest win in a contested caucus when he won by 13 percentage points. Well, Trump won by more than 50. So he's already looking forward to a general election matchup against President Biden. In his victory speech, Trump spoke about his own White House legacy and said Biden was destroying it. Of course, there's still a long way to go before Trump is the official nominee. And he still has Republican challengers who want to make sure that doesn't happen. But of course, they'll need to start having better results than what they had in Iowa. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished in a distant second place with just a slight edge over former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy came in fourth, then suspended his presidential campaign and endorsed former President Trump. Next up, the candidates have their sights set on New Hampshire, which is holding its primary one week from today. (music) Iowa Democrats did not officially select their nominee yesterday, but President Biden's team still decided to celebrate. The Biden-Harris re-election campaign announced a huge fundraising haul from the final few months of 2023. And with that, Team Biden says it now has $117 million on hand. Aides say that's the largest sum for any Democratic candidate in history at this point in the race. They credit grassroots enthusiasm and say almost a million individual supporters have now made contributions. Though it's worth noting, even though Biden's totals are historic by Democrat standards, Trump did raise even more at the same point in the 2020 election cycle. He's expected to release his latest fundraising numbers by the end of this week. Once again, former President Trump is going to trial over a sexual abuse case from the 1990s. The first of two lawsuits over this already went to trial last year. A federal jury found that he was liable for assaulting magazine writer E. Jean Carroll and defaming her by saying she lied about it. Trump was ordered to pay her $5 million in damages. Minutes later, the former president called the whole case rigged and called Carroll a whack job. So Carroll's lawyers added even more defamation allegations, which will be brought up this week as well as other statements Trump made about Carroll back in 2019. The judge has said Carroll will not have to prove the former president defamed her again, since these comments are pretty much the same as the ones that were discussed at the first trial. The second trial will only focus on how much more Trump may owe her in damages. She's seeking $10 million. But even in the past few days, Trump has continued to talk about this case, saying Carroll has been faking her story. And he called the judge in the case a crazed Trump-hating judge presiding over an election interference witch hunt. This time, Trump plans to attend the trial and says he wants to testify. Jury selection begins today. The swatting trend seems to have hit its biggest target yet. A person called 911 claiming there was a fire at the White House and that someone was trapped inside. Several fire and EMS crews rushed over only to realize it was a false alarm. Technically, there weren't any SWAT teams dispatched, but authorities in Washington, D.C. say this was in the same spirit of swatting incidents that have become more and more common lately. Remember, swatting is when people make phony calls for help, leading heavily armed law enforcement officers to show up at unsuspecting people's homes. And at times, they have turned violent. In recent weeks, swatting incidents have targeted presidential candidates, lawmakers, judges, and special counsel Jack Smith, who has been investigating former President Trump. The FBI created a national online database to track this problem. Most of the country is still hunkered down in the middle of an extreme winter storm. Really, the Southwest is the only region of the country that's being spared right now. Elsewhere, Americans are getting hit with snow, ice, and brutally cold temperatures. The National Weather Service says some of the most dangerous conditions are in the Rockies, Great Plains, and Midwest, since those areas are seeing sub-zero wind chills. We're talking about wind chills so low that people could get frostbite within minutes and hypothermia shortly after. Unfortunately, at least nine deaths have been attributed to this storm so far. And the death toll is expected to rise as more new daily temperature records get broken. 
Montana took the title for coldest temperature in the country yesterday when part of the state dropped down to negative 42 degrees. But it's not just low temps impacting Americans. Some areas of Tennessee got as much as eight inches of snow, and more snow is falling this morning across the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, while elsewhere, snow and ice that's already built up is freezing over. Now, with so much snow, ice, and brutally frigid air, schools in many major American cities have once again canceled classes. Also, hundreds of flights have been canceled after thousands were scrapped yesterday. And in Texas, the state electric grid put out another appeal for people to conserve power to avoid blackouts. This storm is expected to move out by tomorrow. But keep in mind, another winter storm system is right around the corner. Stay tuned. We have more news for you still coming up. But first, this episode is sponsored by ZocDoc. You know that feeling when you're around certain people in your life, or maybe you get this feeling at work, where you kind of have to filter yourself and not say what you want to say, or maybe you just feel judged. It should not be that way with your doctor. I really think it's important you can feel safe and honest with your doctor and actually feel like a team working together to do what's best for your body and overall health. And if you don't have that or you're searching for that now, ZocDoc is a great place to find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable. ZocDoc makes it super easy to find more options that are right for you. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. I go there especially to easily search for doctors of a certain specialty that also take my insurance and are nearby. And then I can compare reviews from there. So it's really convenient and really simple to use. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com newsworthy. ZocDoc.com newsworthy. Okay, now back to the news. For the second time in just a month, a powerful volcanic eruption sent lava flowing through an Icelandic fishing town. Thousands of people started evacuating when small earthquakes started in a sign an eruption was coming. Well, just hours later, lava consumed some of their homes. Iceland has more than 20 active volcano systems, so the country typically sees one eruption every four to five years. But this volcanic system in particular has been dormant for almost 800 years, and a lot of people who live nearby were not expecting it. The lava flow has slowed down a lot in the last 24 hours, but Icelandic meteorologists say they're worried more eruptions could be coming. American ships are being targeted in the Middle East even after U.S. strikes that were meant to break down militants' ability to keep up those kinds of attacks. Most recently, Iranian-backed Houthi militants fired a missile at a U.S.-owned and operated container ship off the coast of Yemen. Some of the cargo was damaged, but the ship itself was not too badly impacted and was able to continue its journey. Still, Houthi leaders say this won't be their only attack, that it now considers all American and British ships to be enemy targets, a reality that could really put international shipping at risk. Now, the New York Times says senior U.S. military officials are bracing for all kinds of scenarios. Though Iran's foreign minister warned the U.S. not to respond, Iran also took direct responsibility for launching strikes near an American consulate in Iraq and for a separate missile attack that hit targets inside Syria. Iran says it went after places where anti-Iranian terror groups planned assaults in Iran. The U.S. condemned those attacks but said no American infrastructure was damaged. The U.S. Defense Secretary was discharged from the hospital this week. Remember, Secretary Lloyd Austin was hospitalized for two weeks to treat complications from prostate cancer surgery that he kept secret from the White House. Well, now he is working from home while he continues to recover. But as doctors say, his prognosis is excellent. President Biden has said Austin should have told him about the hospitalization sooner, but he says he still has confidence in his Pentagon chief. That said, his secrecy drew more criticism from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. And the chairman of the Armed Services Committee says he opened a formal inquiry into the matter. A U.S. Air Force officer made history this week by becoming Miss America. Miss Colorado, Madison Marsh, became the first active duty military service member to win the title in the pageant's nearly 100-year history. And now that she's won, Marsh says she's excited to share what it means to be a member of the military community and Miss America. She has plenty of other accomplishments under her belt, too, that helped her secure the title— for the talent portion of the competition, Marsh performed a spoken word piece about earning her pilot's license at 16. Marsh graduated from the Air Force Academy with a degree in physics. And after her mom died of pancreatic cancer, she began a new foundation, which has raised more than a quarter million dollars for research. 
Now, Marsh says she plans to devote her year of service as Miss America to raising even more awareness about pancreatic cancer. She's also now pursuing her master's in public policy at Harvard. Last night's 75th annual Emmy Awards celebrated the best in TV from the past 75 years. The whole evening started off with host Anthony Anderson performing a collection of TV theme songs. But of course, the nostalgia did not end there. Veteran casts of shows like Cheers, Martin, All in the Family, and Grey's Anatomy reunited on replicas of their show's legendary sets. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler also teamed up again on the SNL Weekend Update desk. And Peter Dinklage took the stage with the iconic Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. As for the actual awards, Elton John finally became an EGOT when he won for his Disney Plus concert special, meaning he's now won all of the top awards in Hollywood, an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. The Bear took the top prize for the best comedy series, and Succession won best drama, with several of both shows' stars sweeping the acting categories, too. And the whole show closed with a clip of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. Next up on the awards season calendar is The Grammys, happening next month. Well, that's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, support for this episode comes from AG1. Taking care of your health is not always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why, for almost a year now, I've been drinking AG1 every day. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized and focused. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre- and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. I know with AG1, I'm giving my body high-quality nutrition. Every batch of AG1 goes through a rigorous testing process, and ingredients are sourced for absorption, potency, and nutrient density. If there is one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it is AG1. And that's why I partnered with them for so long at this point. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. That's drinkag1.com slash newsworthy. Check it out. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, what breed of cat does not have fur? You can play along with us in our weekly roundup email that comes out every Friday. Simply sign up to get it at thenewsworthy.com slash email or find the link in today's episode notes. As for last week's trivia question, the Rockettes dance troupe most famously perform at what venue? The answer is Radio City Music Hall in New York City. But they actually did not start there. The dance troupe launched in Missouri in 1925, and at the time, they were called the Missouri Rockets. But in 1932, they started opening at Radio City. And just two years later, they adopted the name of the Radio City Rockettes. The Rockettes are most famous for their kick line. In fact, they're known to do 160 high kicks per show. The holiday season is their busiest since they perform a Christmas spectacular each year. They also appear in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and they perform at the Rockefeller Center Tree Lighting. All right, thank you so much for listening and for sharing the show. We'll be back with another news roundup for you tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 